So welcome to yellow card class. This class didn't originally exist in our learning progression in the district. Originally, we started right after the case for change with what we called Outcome Camp. Outcome Camp gave teachers the opportunity to navigate the Douglas County School District curriculum in a whole new way. I know when I was a teacher, what really happened most of the time is that people would hand me my biology textbook or my chemistry textbook and I was expected to teach it. There wasn't really a curriculum other than that. In our district, there is a different curriculum. We want to take an opportunity in this class to really explore and uncover that curriculum and then start working on the first part of that curriculum so that if you choose to take the Outcome Camp class, you're fully prepared to dive right into integrating the skills. So I want to start with what we consistently have started with in other courses and that is, what is your hopes and dreams for this particular class? What are you doing here? What are you hoping to get? We want to make sure that although we think we've constructed a really logical and appropriate learning progression course that's very constructivist and personalized for the individual teachers in the room and leaders, we also want to make sure if there's something particular that you're wondering about or hoping to get from this class that we don't miss it. So there should be some chart paper in your room with your facilitator. The first thing you need to do is really talk to your facilitator about what you hope to get from the class so that we don't miss that. In sight, it's very clear that we value collaboration with students. In modern education thinking, we all know that collaborating with students improves the long-term retention of learning as well as student engagement and buy-in. And the same is true for adults. We absolutely want you to be completely engaged in this whole process and make it your own. We don't want this to be a one-size-fits-all teaching of the past experience. So the first step is really important that you're really honest with your facilitator and share with them what you hope to get from the next few hours uh, together with us. So on the chart paper, you can talk about it at your tables first if you're most comfortable. Kind of feel out other people too. And then make sure that you collect the room's thoughts on the chart paper so we can return to those later and make sure we've met all your needs. I think we're ready to jump in and get started on this whole notion of curriculum and content. But we have to start with curriculum. That's the bigger picture, right? So on your table, your facilitator should have you a list of items. Work together with the members at your table and decide what items on the list you believe are curriculum. Now in a transparent sense, I want you to know that this is a formative assessment for your facilitator so they can see where your class, your group of folks are on the continuum of really understanding the concepts of curriculum. It's important before we dive into the actual work that we have a high level understanding and a foundational knowledge of what curriculum is and how it pertains in our district to our work. So go ahead on your papers, circle the items that you believe are curriculum. In a little bit, we will come back together and talk about what you circled and why. Facilitators will be around to ask questions, to coach, and to help you if you get stuck. I would encourage you as you look at the list to really think about what certain items have in common and really think about what kind of lens or what kind of filter are you using to determine if things are curriculum or if they're not. So go ahead, take about five minutes and get that done. So at your tables, you've had the conversation about what you believe is curriculum and your facilitators have walked around and talked about what you chose and why. And I believe we've all gotten to a common understanding that these are the items on the list that are curriculum. They include the four C's because we believe all students in every unit should have an opportunity to develop some component of the four C's. The 21st century skills, remember, we believe in this district that all students over 13 years in Douglas County School District should have the opportunity to develop and receive feedback on the 21st century skills, but they are not actually appropriate in every course. So we don't teach them in every course in every unit like we do the four C's. They are really taught where applicable or where appropriate. For too long in education, I've seen people come up with a really great idea and say, we have to infuse it everywhere. And it often doesn't make any sense at all. And then it downgrades what really should be happening in that course or in that unit. So we want to make sure that if it makes sense to teach global awareness or financial literacy, that we teach it. But if it doesn't make any sense at all, that we don't try to shoehorn it into a unit where it doesn't belong. Still, the 21st century skills are part of our Douglas County School District curriculum, or GVC, across 13 years that a student is hopefully with us. 
Content is also part of our curriculum. We believe that our students should be exposed to and have knowledge. Edie Hirsch calls this cultural literacy. There's a lot of other people that really have a strong sense about what all kids should know and be able to do. And the no part is content. We want to make sure students can do math. We want to make sure that students know about microbiology if they take biology. There's a lot of examples of this and it is important. However, in the past, content was really mostly what we focused on, particularly in the secondary. We love our content, we love to teach it, we transcript it, we're all about it. But today we know that content is really a vehicle for the development of higher level thinking and skills. So we have to put content in there, absolutely it is important, but it has to be in the proper place too. State standards, this is one that a lot of people struggle with. Are they part of the curriculum or aren't they? Well, I could argue it both ways. The bottom line is in Colorado, we're a local control state where the local board of education sets the curriculum based on the recommendations of instructional staff in the district. We've developed our own curriculum. So where does that leave the state standards? Well, it is a basic expectation that the state standards are included in our district curriculum, and ours are. So when we built our curriculum, we actually analyzed the state standards that include the Common Core because we are, for now, a Common Core state, and we included those in our world-class outcomes. We'll learn a lot more about this in Outcome Camp, but it's important to understand that we do have those in there. So it's perfectly okay to circle them, although I could make an argument that they're really not exactly explicitly part of the curriculum. For now, we're gonna go with yes. World-class outcomes. Those are the outcomes that together our teachers, hundreds of teachers, came together and built. And they built them based on the state standards. Remember that they brought them together and they did this thing called blooming them and sifting them. Well, what we did was we really analyzed the high cognitive complexity, or not, of the state standards. And where they were too low, we raised them up. The other thing that we really did and spent a lot of time on was integration. We know that the brain learns best when learning is integrated, when we teach the concepts together that go together. So it makes no sense to teach one concept on Monday and a different concept on Thursday and act like they've never met when the reality is they're very much related. If you look at Inspired Innovation, you can actually click on a world-class outcome and all the state standards will drop out from underneath it. You can see all the standards that one outcome actually incorporates. It's really cool how Douglas County School District teachers raised the rigor of the standards and integrated them to make the world-class outcomes. These other items on the list that you didn't circle are not curriculum. That doesn't mean they're not part of education, but it's important for us to all understand what is curriculum and what's not curriculum. When you talked at your tables and with your facilitators, you, most of you came up with this whole notion that curriculum equal the goals for the students. So as we filter through our list, we say, are worksheets the goals for our students? Are those the targets? Of course not, right? They are a means to an end, but they are not the end unto themselves. The same is true of all of these other things. I love labs in science. Remember, I was a high school science teacher and I adored every lab that I ever taught. But I realized that the lab is actually not the target. The target is the curriculum. The lab is just a means to get to that curriculum. So the items that we've circled in orange are all ends or goals. And the items that are not circled are means or strategies that we might use to get to those goals. As we move forward through this, keep that in mind. And the other thing I would encourage you to do is think back to your filter that you did in a Case for Change class. Look at the items that we have circled in orange and decide for yourselves and with those at your table if you think that those would go through your filter. Do you think that the four C's align with what we commit to for all kids in the future? Do you think that all students need an opportunity to learn and develop 21st century skills? How about content and world-class outcomes? Do they go through your filter or not? I think this is an important question you have to ask. It's definitely a question we asked as we were working to develop the GVC as a whole. The next part of this is we're going to move into a really specific look at content. Remember that the other pieces will come in the world-class outcome camp. And we used to do this all together. But after working with teachers in a number of times, we've learned that we need to spend a little front-end time on content. So here's what I need you to do. 
I want you to write down on a piece of paper all the things that you believe you're required to cover, and I hate to use that word because what we aspire to do is explore and uncover. But we all have this paradigm about things that we are supposed to teach before our students leave our classroom, and most of those things in our heads are content. So let's start with this, on a piece of paper, and if you're in grade level teams or departmental teams, great, work together. If you're not, you're going to need to do this on your own. And it's not cheating to Google things that might be helpful to you. If you can't remember every last thing that you feel that you're required to teach your students, that's completely understandable. Go ahead and reference the documents that help you out. But make a list of all the content, every single thing that you would feel like you didn't do your job if your students didn't experience during their time with you. This should be a long, brainstormed, messy list, and that's okay. That's where we're starting. If you need help here, signal your facilitator to come over and talk about this more. And remember that content is usually knowledge. It's usually facts, information, things that we have always taught because we felt they were really important that all students in the United States, in Douglas County, know before they leave our system. So let's go ahead and get started on that. We'll come back together and talk about our lists. You should have a really high quality list of every single thing that you feel absolutely responsible to teach and assess with your students. If you don't feel like everything is on your list, that's okay, but make sure that you get everything on there before you go to the next class, which is the Outcome Camp class. So if you're going to go to that class, you need to make sure that your list is really comprehensive. If you don't, it's going to make it very challenging for you to develop integrated units because there will be missing pieces that you'll have to try to fit in later. So this list is ultra important and forms a solid foundation for the work we're going to have ahead. I used biology because again, I was a high school science teacher and so I brainstormed some concepts in biology. Now due to the limited space on my whiteboard, not every single thing is on my list, but yours should be comprehensive. The next thing you need to do is you need to go through your list and square or circle, whatever works for you. The template is not the issue here. Some people prefer to do this in flowcharts. Some people prefer to circle items and draw arrows like I've done. That is completely up to you. You can work with your facilitator on finding the right strategy that makes sense to you. But what's really important here is that you go ahead and identify what we call the macro concepts. The macro concepts are the big ideas, the things that you want to make sure students experience in one way or the other. Then, the items that you don't circle, or square in my case, are usually the micro concepts. They're concepts or ideas, or maybe just simply vocabulary words, that go underneath the bigger umbrella idea. So you will see that I have put squares around genetics, microbiology, zoology, and botany on my list. Those are definitely the big high-level concepts that I want to make sure all of my biology students experience in my course. Then I have a lot of other items that aren't identified as a macro concept, and that's good. If you have too many boxes, you probably have too many macro concepts. So make sure that one of these doesn't really fold into another. Now, because these are all biology, of course they all fold into biology, but we don't want just one macro concept. So you should have, depending on the length of your course, five, six, seven of these across the course of a year. That doesn't mean you have to create that many. It is not a hard and fast number. It's just a guide. So I've created four macro concepts on my biology course. And then I've started assigning the micro content to the macro concepts or slash content. So, viruses and bacteria. Really important to me to teach about viruses and bacteria in biology. But I'm going to do that in the microbiology unit or underneath the microbiology macro concept. Is every single student going to learn exactly the same things about viruses and bacteria? Probably not. That's because in the micro content part of this, there's going to be variability depending on student voice and choice. That collaboration with students piece. 
This allows for some differentiation and a lot more engagement. But the idea is that I'm committing that every student will experience the whole notion of a virus and a bacteria underneath the umbrella concept of microbiology. I've done the same thing with genetics. It's really important to me as a teacher that my students understand the concept of Punnett squares and how genetics happens. So I have assigned Punnett squares to genetics. And that is a micro concept within the macro concept of genetics. Now there's all kinds of other things I could put under there. Mendeleev's pea plants, DNA. These are really important concepts and content in genetics. But it's really about creating these macro ideas. That's going to allow you to really integrate in the next phase. So I want you to do this next piece and you can do it in whatever organization works for you. You can either write it on your list and divide it up like I have, or you can create a new organizational structure like I have over here. So this is a bit of a flow chart or an outline that works for me. You need to develop what works for you. What I've done is I've identified my macro concepts, microbiology and genetics. I have more over there, but again, because of limited space on my paper, I'm just giving you an example. Then underneath each one, I have chosen the items that I believe are the micro content underneath those macro content slash concepts. So the cell, viruses, bacteria, lab techniques, and then I've even gone one step further and said, well, I'm going to put petri dishes and gram staining under lab techniques. You can scaffold this however you want, however it works for you. The important part is that you create some sort of a logical organization of the content that you feel is your responsibility to teach your students over the course of the year or semester if it's a semester long course. We'll be using this a lot going forward. The other thing you should do is you should look back at your filter and look at the content you've selected and make sure that your content is getting your students to that 21st century education or that modern educational experience that you have committed that they all should have. If there's something on your list that really belongs to the Henry Ford era and not the modern era, you might want to reconsider it. In Douglas County, teachers have a lot of flexibility in this area. While we definitely want to make sure, if we're transcripting biology, that students have experienced microbiology, genetics, zoology, and botany, there's a lot of flexibility within those areas for teachers to allow students to have voice and choice and for teachers to personalize the learning for the students they have in front of them. That's not always the case. In some districts, they have very strict scope and sequence and an accompanying pacing guide that says you will teach viruses and it will be on next Thursday. We don't do that here because we believe that teaching is both an art and a science and that what you want to do is put empowerment with five-star teachers to create amazing opportunities for the kids who are in front of them. Not some mythical group of students that are the average. No, we want you to really use your professional expertise here. This is why teaching is a true profession. Anybody can follow the teacher's guide of a basil or a textbook and just pass out the worksheets as if it didn't matter who the students in front of them were. Here, we don't see it that way. We believe five-star teachers will identify the students in front of them, their unique needs, their strengths, their challenges, their interests, Combine that with the outcomes they want for all students in their class and create a personalized learning experience for each one. Why do we want that? Because we believe that that will actually have long-term retention of the knowledge and skills the students develop. Whereas if we just march through a book, it's unlikely the students will retain much of that for a long time. There's lots of remediation data that show that students don't retain information for a long time when all we do is memorize, regurgitate, and then there's the third part, dump. So that's why this is so important that you really figure out what is my course about? What do I have to teach my students so that I can feel that I have done the right thing for them? And then how can I lay that out in a logical way that sort of creates what we call big rocks? 
the things that are not negotiable. Every student I have will experience microbiology. And then little rocks, things that students will experience differently depending on their unique needs and how I personalize the learning for them. We're going to help you a lot more with this in the Outcome Camp class. So I don't want you to worry about it too much at this point. I'm just trying to paint a picture and foreshadow where we're going together so that you have an understanding of why we're doing this. Brainstorming all the parts of the content that you teach that you feel absolutely responsible for teaching, whether it's addition, subtraction, microbiology, multiplication, long division, whatever it is, put it on the list. Then organize it in a way that makes sense. The things you must teach and the items that support that. The macro concept, the micro concept, the big rocks, the little rocks, whatever works for you. We're going to be taking this forward into the next class and it's going to be really important that you have this done correctly. And here's how we would encourage you to end this part of the work. We have yellow cards that we have on your tables. Your facilitators will be around to help you with this if you have any questions. As you move into the next class, there's a tactile activity that really helps people start to see at a kinesthetic level, a visual spatial level, how their different parts of the curriculum can come together as one and create a personalized unit for a student. To do that, it's pretty important that you take the yellow cards that we have on your table and write macro concepts on the front so that when you're thinking about, hmm, I have these 21st century skills, I have these four C's, I have these world-class outcomes, what content would it make sense for me to use as the vehicle for developing those? Having the card with the content all organized will give you a huge head start in the next course. So on the front of the yellow card, the macro content, the concept, microbiology. On the back of the card, because it's really important to some of us to have everything accounted for, all of your micro content goes on the back. So I would have microbiology on the front, and on the back I would have things like cells, viruses, bacteria, lab techniques, petri dishes and gram staining, and many, many more things. Because that is not even close to everything I would want to put on the back for microbiology. So here's what you need to do. Go through your list if you haven't already, identify the macro concepts, and assign the micro content to those macro concepts. Do that however works for you. Create a flow chart, an outline, or go straight to the yellow cards. Put the macro on the front and the micro on the back. Before you do them all, talk with your facilitator and make sure you're on the right track. It's pretty frustrating if you start working on something and it's not quite right and you have to start over. There is a fair amount of work here identifying all the pieces and getting them in the right places. So when you think you have a card right, I would definitely check in with somebody to make sure. So go ahead, spend the time, I promise you it's worth it, and get your cards all ready to go. Most of you have a really good start on brainstorming every piece of content that you teach. Some of us have spent time going out and exploring, finding those things that we are required to teach in our minds based on our textbooks, also based on our buildings, and also based on the state requirements. And that's good, but remember what you're really required to do is to ensure that every student has the opportunity to explore the Douglas County School District GVC. And in that content are the state standards, in those skills are the state standards. So you don't have to double check, we've already really done that for you. But you have great lists and you're starting to break them down into pieces. One thing I want to encourage everybody to do that comes up when I'm visiting tables is make sure that you don't have two things that are really similar that might go better together that you have separated into different macro units. One of those things you should check are things that we've always done. We usually start with, well, I've always taught this unit on X. Make sure that unit on X doesn't really go with unit on Y as you're thinking about this from that high-level balcony that we talk about in A Case for Change with Ron Heifetz's work. From there, make sure that everything you've put on your list gets you closer to your filter. Make sure it goes through your filter. If it doesn't, either your filter needs adjusted or your content needs adjusted. My experience is, most of the time, it's our content that needs adjusted and not our filter. Because we started with, what do we want for all students in the 21st century and we put everything down that was really important to us. Now we're testing some things that we have a lot of heart for. And that's okay. 
We need to continue to ask ourselves those questions. And it's also okay in this district to let go of some things. We feel such a grand obligation to do some things that we've always done and we feel like we're not meeting our responsibilities if we let something go. But the truth is, sometimes letting something go brings something much more important in. So feel comfortable eliminating something from your list that you've always done because it doesn't make sense anymore according to your filter and according to the work you've done today. We encourage risk taking and if it's a big thing that you think is really going to make a difference, ask the grade level above or below you. Ask your principal or assistant principal. Check with other people. They'll be a really good reflection. Sometimes we're just too close to it to let it go. But it's important that we do that work because the truth is we're not going to remember and our kids aren't going to remember all of this massive amounts of knowledge. It's just not possible. What we're going for in this district is depth. We don't want breadth, we want depth because learning to learn, unlearn, and relearn will give our students the ability to access content anywhere, anytime through their phones, their computers, or anything else. So we don't have to make sure they've memorized all that information anymore. It doesn't make sense. And during a case for change, most people have put that on their filter, that it no longer makes sense to memorize massive amounts of information. At the same time, we want students who are exposed to important concepts so that they are well aware of where they can find that information and go deeper if they need to. The last piece of this is this. Make sure that you get your yellow cards done and complete in a way that you really feel good about before you go on to the next class, if you're going to do that. Today, we've really just spent all of our time uncovering and organizing the concept of content. Remember that the Douglas County Guaranteed Bible Curriculum has four components, content, four C's, 21st century skills, and world-class outcomes. And we've only looked at one of those in depth today. If you're interested in taking the next step and you get all your yellow cards done and they make it through your filter, then definitely sign up for World Class Outcome Camp. Why is that? Well, because that's where you take the next step of working on integrating the other three components of the GVC into what is a curriculum matrix or however you want to organize it. <clears throat> a, a last idea that I want to make sure that we're all on the same page about is in Douglas County, like I said earlier, we are committed to empowering great teachers to do great things for students, unique and individual students who are different. So we guarantee all families, all students, that every child will have an opportunity to learn, explore, uncover, and create within the Douglas County GVC. But we have left plenty of space for personalization and differentiation by the expert teacher. When you have students in front of you and they have a passion for a particular concept, your ability to take these items and integrate them with that passion will make all the difference for students. Students who have never been successful before, parents have told us that in this model, they experience success for the very first time. Imagine having a child in sixth grade who you feel has never had a successful year of school. Come home and say, I am just as smart as everyone else. I can do things that nobody else can do because I was allowed to use my love of three-dimensional CAD or drama or music or whatever it is with my teacher's support as facilitator and coach to craft an opportunity to learn, explore, and uncover important content and skills through that thing I have a passion about. We have seen kids achieve at higher levels than ever before when this approach is tried. And don't think the teachers weren't nervous. They absolutely were nervous. They said right on the front end, I wanna do this for my students because I care about them and I believe in them and I know this is gonna work, but I'm still scared that their test scores might go down. Well, here's the good news for all of us, less like pioneers and more like settlers. The test scores don't go down, in fact, Students who have integrated learning opportunities at high levels actually have higher scores. When you don't teach to the test, is it possible that scores can go up? Absolutely they can, because thinking students do better on tests anyway. Thinking students develop reading skills at higher and faster rates than ever before. Because when you're engaged and find purpose and meaning in what you're doing, it makes a huge difference in the way that your brain learns and the learning sticks with you for a much longer time. We talk about the difference between four minutes and 40 years. 
we're striving for 40 years with our students. So remember that today we really worked hard on this content piece. What is it that I'm responsible to make sure every biology student knows about biology? And then what are the things that they may or may not experience as I develop that personalized opportunity for them? The next piece is bringing in world-class outcomes, 4Cs, and 21st century skills, rounding out the GVC in my unit so I can say to my parents, every one of your children in my course or class will absolutely have the opportunity to uncover, explore, create, and evaluate, and receive feedback on all of the GVC. But because your child is unique and has unique passions and interests, we have this whole component up here for student voice and choice or teacher ideas. The personalization, the differentiation, and the empowerment of professionals is a cornerstone of the way that we've designed our curriculum in this school district. So please feel like you are encouraged to take risks and do unique things for unique kids because we know that the outcomes will be better than ever before. So I want to dig into this idea of personalization and differentiation just a little bit more. So as you know, in Douglas County, schools have the opportunity, if they want to, it is not a requirement, to go down a path of sort of choosing a means by which their students will learn. So an example is International Baccalaureate. We have several schools that are working on that. Artful Learning, uh, right here in Castle Rock at Meadowview Elementary, they are an artful learning school. We also have Expeditionary Learning in multiple schools in the district. Um, those are just a few examples of schools who have worked together with their communities and decided that they want to offer students a unique way of learning that is consistent throughout the building. That, again, that's not required, but it happens. Well, when you go down that path, it obviously is going to influence the top part of your test tube. So again, it doesn't matter if my child's at an artful learning school, he or she is going to get all of these outcomes from the GVC because that's guaranteed for every child in the district. In addition to that, my child, because I have chosen Artful Learning, is going to get some masterworks up in the top part of the test tube that aren't going to exist in other schools. That's part of the choice that I've made. In IB, it's the same thing. The learner profile, all of the skills that they want them to have, uh, if they require a language, some of those pieces, that's going to be up here in the personalization and differentiation part of the test tube. The other part of this is what the teacher chooses to add or what the students choose to add. So this can vary from school to school to classroom to classroom, even student to student within a classroom. And that is encouraged. The last piece today is for you to revisit your list on the wall with your facilitator. Remember at the beginning we asked for your hopes, your dreams, your ideas about the course, what you really wanted to get? so that we could collaborate with you on what we're doing here today so your facilitators would be better equipped as they walk around the room and coach you to meet your needs? We want to revisit that list and make sure that there's nothing that we haven't attended to. Some of the items may be addressed in the next class and we'll be sure and tell you that if that's the case. If there are certain things that have not been done that are unique to your needs, we'll make sure that we get that done also. So revisit with your facilitator your hopes for your next course and then we'll have one closing piece. We have finished our course for today, and I know that for some of you that was a lot of brain work, but it's good work. This is our profession. We own it. We are creating the future of American education every day in our classrooms. We are showing people what is possible when you get outside of some of the strategies we've had during the last 10 years of No Child Left Untested. We've really moved beyond the thinking that we just want to cover our information as fast as we can and teach to the test. Instead, we want to create this differentiated test tube, if you will, where we mix items together that are appropriate and merge with students' passion, play, and purpose, like Tony Wagner says. You've really worked hard on the content today. Congratulations on that. If you have more work to do, please feel free to do so. From here, the next course in the learning progression is World Class Outcome Camp. That's where you take the rest of the items plus your content and build a matrix or however you want to organize it. The template is not the goal, but actually the work to organize it in a way that integrates it for kids is actually what we want to help you do. So go ahead, if you're ready, and sign up for that next class. After that class, you'll have the opportunity to take one unit of outcomes, all the things that you commit to teach and assess for your students, and build a summative assessment for it. 
That's a really fun opportunity, particularly for people who have a yellow preference in Emergenetics. So that's where we're headed. The next class, create the matrix that shows how you're going to organize all your curriculum into units, and then take one of those units and build a summative that assesses and gives students feedback on everything that you've committed to teach in your matrix. World Class Outcome Camp is next, then the summative assessment class. And from there, we'll go on to formative and interim assessments, and then our favorite in education, stage three, how you actually facilitate the learning opportunities for students in the 21st century. All about blooms, the brain, constructivist opportunities, really offering you the opportunity to learn to teach a lot like we have been teaching in these classes. I hope you could see as we went through this, we gave you the opportunity to explore, uncover, and create, to evaluate the quality of the content that you've taught against your filter, and then to decide what you're keeping and what you're letting go. To build your own content matrix or cards like we've done today so that you know exactly what you're going to teach every year to all students and what things are more negotiable depending on the needs of students that you have in front of you. Thanks so much for your time today. I hope you've enjoyed this and I think it will really set you up for success as you move on to the next class.